Yes, she my substitute. I've never felt so certain that I've had enough for you. What's going on? Five, four, we are back. Shout out to the CIA. One love to the FBI. Feminine, beautiful, inspirational ladies. What's going on? What's going on? City gender in the chat room. Let's get it.
problem. Cause I know what I'm getting into. Yes. Yeah. And nothing can stop me. No. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I realize. Shout out to my next ex-wife. Come on. So tell you Why are you so happy? going on with that we are back what's going on what's going on what is going on people shout out to all the cia the confident intelligent and assertive men out there one love to the feminine beautiful inspirational ladies candle of the e- evening Cedra 11 from Lalabo. Fragrance of the evening. Baccarat Rouge 540 Extract de Parfum. That has to be the unofficial fragrance of Atlanta because it seems like everybody and their mother is wearing that fragrance down here. Before we get started, uh, got some bad news today from the fragrance community. Um... I don't know how many of you guys have been following me for a long time, uh, but I started out doing my videos in men's style and fragrance. Actually, my first videos are fragrance videos. And uh, one of the coolest people in the fragrance community, obviously one of the most well-liked people, everybody liked him, everybody loved him, was a guy by the name of Brooklyn Fragrance Lover, Carlos Powell. And unfortunately, uh, he passed today. So uh, it's a shock to everybody. Um, Even in the fragrance community where like any other hobby community, it can be snippy. It can be really kind of silly in a lot of ways. Carlos is one of the few people that everybody universally liked, loved, and respected. So, um, yeah, just wow, just wow. So, uh, I don't know what else to say to that, you know, folks, life is not guaranteed to any of us. So we talk about this living and dying, um, it's real. It's real. So uh, they have a GoFundMe set up for um, his burial situation. So I'm just saying my goodbyes to that man. Um, you know, um, as I understand it, he passed. Uh, I don't want to spread rumors, but I did hear um, coronavirus. Uh, so while people out here are joking about this stuff, you know, I got people in my family right now who are positive. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, before we get started today, hold on. <clears throat> All right. 
So getting back uh, in from Atlanta, I mean, back in from L.A. And wow. Huh. Run, tell that. Run, tell that. How many people uh, have gone by, have seen my community tab? How many people have gone by and seen my community tab uh, or my Instagram story, which blew up yesterday? Huh? We need to get the likes up. We need to keep the likes to dislike ratio up. If we don't, if I look over and it's lower than half, guess what? We play the whole song. So if you don't want to hear that whole song, get keep the likes or dislikes up because we need to get into this. Why are why are you so happy, ladies? Ladies, what's going on? Why are women so 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 happy today? They're like in the the gray plaid suit, the gray plaid suit with the nice polka dot tie. You know, I like black and I like gray, but sometimes you need to have a little plaid in your wardrobe once you have your basic lineup you need just solids and generally i like the uniform theory you'll usually see me in pinstripes or solids but the only thing i switch up is when i put in my gray plaids uh and this is a glen plaid look that i've rocked and worn for years got the gray accents gray bracelet gray glasses salt and pepper gray hair pissing a lot of folks off because apparently I'm supposed to be so old and so this and so decrepit, but how is it we keep on like, I don't know, winning? What I mean by winning, just had a podcast, you know, the No Jumper podcast, shout out to the folks over at No Jumper, that came out uh, today, that came out today, it's actually about, I expected it to be up sometime this week. And it was fantastic filming with those guys. I loved it. I love filming with Adam 22 and AD. And I will say this. I'll be back out in LA doing a lot of things. As you know, guys, I was actually toying between moving to LA, New York or LA. And I was 90 some odd percent sure I was going to move to New York. But as things have progressed over the last month and a half, LA may make, may make more business sense. Why is that? Because there's a lot of stuff out in LA A lot of stuff out in L.A. But one thing that I noticed. And I was telling my boys behind my boy behind the scenes, my homeboys. And um, why are women so angry today? And what do you mean? When I'm walking around Rodeo Drive, I will tell you, I could not go 30, 40, 50 yards without somebody pointing to me, talking to me. Uh, on any given day, I had at least 20 different conversations about you're that guy that did this or you're that guy that did that. Or we have a Facebook group. I spoke to women. I spoke to women the entire time I was there, the entire time I was there. And what shocked me was how wrong so many women were on just the basic facts. One, you're that guy that called that lady average. No, I'm the guy that agreed with the one when she said she was average. And what it really comes down to is this stopped being about Kevin a long time ago, but I'm the easiest target. So let's talk about it. If you go back to 2018 to 2008 to 2016, there was something that used to be called Obama derangement syndrome. There were people who hated former president Barack Obama and everything he was and everything he stood for so much. So that if he said it was right, it had to be wrong. Whatever he did by virtue of the fact that he did it, that meant there was a problem. See, Austin's better. Not for, not for business. No, thank you. Um, And the funny thing is, there was a, even with, you know, former President Trump, Trump had some of the same effects on people. And it was the strangest thing because intel- otherwise intelligent people would lose their freaking mind with these personalities. And the thing is, what it reminded me, what, 
what made me think of is what these personalities represented. What these personalities represented. So, uh, let's just talk about it. Boom, there you go. Let's give them something to talk about. Oh, yeah, let's give them something to talk about. You know what? Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way before we get into it. I want to get all the way deep into it. Because, ooh-wee, some folks were just upset, triggered. Because, uh, you know, Kevin Samuels, he just took it so easy on her. And da, da, da. Look here. Let's do it. Let's get into it. Something to talk about. <laughs> oh, take that. Run with it. Run till that. Remember this song, Let's Give Them Something to Talk About? Let's give them something to talk about. Oh, take that. Run with it. Run till that. Run till that. Shout out to Martin Lawrence. Great comedy skit. Run till that. Run till that. Martin did that after uh all the controversy where he was running down the street past that everybody and their mama had something to say about martin same thing with richard pryor thing is once you i guess become a public personality you're beyond the story and people got something to say about whatever you do so fuck it fuck it run with it run with it run with it run with it so the funny thing is the people who got the most to say I was dead ass serious Get them up. Come on. Get my likes up. Hit that donation button too, folks. Because I will shut the chat room down to members only. If y'all ain't going to hit the like button, we'll just turn it down for the members only. Hit it up. Hit it up. Hit it up. Shout out to Anthony Bogan. Come on, people. That's right. I'll, I'll let you go. 800 people left. That's right. Y'all can go. Because I would rather the people be here who really want to support the damn show can do something as simple as hit the like button. Not much to ask. All right. Not much to ask, in my opinion. But if so, hey, that's cool. But I will say this, man. I will say this. Um, what I noticed out in LA and Atlanta, and I'm on my way down to Houston is that in general, men are far happier today. I'm seeing more men with smiles on their face. I'm starting to see more men in good moods. I'm starting to see more guys who are just loving life. And what I'm noticing is I'm I'm seeing more women who are just like a little a little tight, unhappy, and it's like what what's going on with the ladies today? Why are you ladies so upset? What is going on with the ladies? And what I'm starting to realize is I think many women are starting to realize that whether they like it or not. Whether they like it or not, uh, the clock is running out on some of this stuff. And 
a lot of my biggest critics and detractors are are women in you know up in that no man's land in that Save zone. Out. and why is that important at 27 to 35 when so many women could decide to do something different but chose to do something differently and where's all this coming from it come it culminated in that interview i did with tommy lee and then after i'm in la um uh, and i keep my moves behind my, my what i don't what i when i'm not here you're not gonna hear about anything in my private life why is that because i have studied this business from the outside and inside and one of the worst things you can do is let your private life be known by people. That's why people always like, show receipts, do this, do that. Are you insane? Are you insane? Because that is asking for disaster. Why? Because you're trying to prove something to people who don't like you. Here's a photo with me and Tommy Lee, and it says, let's give them something to talk about. Now, in this photograph, let's just look at some there are her shoulders, my shoulders. There's her torso, my torso. Here's her knee and lower part of her leg. Here is my femur. Most intelligent people would know that um, this photograph, by the virtue of how it had to be um, cropped, cut for you to would just show a, a, a tall man with a woman. But no, this photograph did something exactly what it was intended to. Let's give them something to talk about. And boy, talk, did they do it. Soon as people saw me with Tommy Lee on a photo, they told on themselves. Women came out, you know, old, angry, bitter, dried up, hateful women came out in droves. Look at him. Short dude. I knew he was short. Short man syndrome and short, short, shorty, short, short, short. And I'm sitting back and I'm just like, wow. Oh man. Now funny when when I when I when when I was walking, when I'm there, I'm not gonna lie, when I'm there, there were people, non-black folks sitting around pointing over here like taking pictures of such and so forth. I love your outfit, this and that. And then somebody's like, I, I recognize you from YouTube. These folks don't look like you or me. But on YouTube, oh, everything is wrong with you. See, when a woman is angry, when people are unhappy, they want to misery loves company and they want to share it with everybody else. So I let it rock. And I want you guys to go in the comment section and see how happy so many women are today and how happy so many beta males are today. Because for the most part, I'm going to say, usually when I run into men, probably about 70 to 80% of men are happy in a good mood. But there are 10 to 20% of men who are finished. And you're in that same category of, you know, misery loves company. But I'm going to focus on you ladies today because what's the big deal? Some of y'all wanted to see me tear her to shreds. But aren't you the same people that say you need to change your tone and moderate what you do? Some of y'all are talking about, look, at, you can't, you can't, you, 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 you need to stop being so mean. What, what, which one is it, ladies? Oh, I get it. It's not really about what I say. It's just Kevin derangement syndrome. Oh, well, you know, you're gay. He's secretly gay or likes little kids. But then you see me out with beautiful women. Uh Oh, well, which one is it? And the women I deal with, you will never see them. Shout out to Adam and No Jumper Podcast and those folks. Because I, when I went to the No Jumper Podcast, I had somebody with me. Yep. And those people, the people I deal with, you will never, ever see. The only people you will ever see me with as a female are females who have a public profile. 
Why? Because some of you folks are just angry and looking for a reason for anything. Go in that, go in that comment section and look at all the stuff people had to say. Now, what you see is two people smile and laugh and having a good time. I'm full of lobster. She's full of, well, I'm not going to say what she ate, but she, we just chilling, having a good time. And why are y'all so angry? Let's look at some of the comments, shall we? Let's look at some of the comments. Let's go backwards. Kevin, you're lowering your value by effort. <laughs> Let me just say this, man. It is sad that so many of you guys have never left high school. I'm just saying that. I'm just, uh, uh, some of you guys have never left high school. That is a man, she almost same height as Kevin. All right. Go on and on and on and on through here. Now, what really tripped me out is, well, let me start from the top. Let's start from the top. How many people really tried to act like, I knew he had secret Napoleon energy. Look at him. He's super short and this and that. And I'm like, Okay, let's say I'm five foot four. And is what I say any less true? Let's say I'm five foot two. And is what I say any less true? No, the problem is some of you are looking for any reason. Folks, why is this important? Because this shows the state of so many modern women. Take it away from me in this situation and just, I want you to just close your eyes for a moment and I need you to go onto platforms around YouTube and I need you to envision the facial expressions of so many female content creators. Just envision the facial expressions when they're talking. Do you see a woman who's smiling, who's light, pleasant, effervescent, joyful? Or do you see somebody who's motherfucker? I hear women who curse more than men. Some of you ladies are so far gone that it's even hard to listen to you. So far gone, it is even hard to listen to you. So it's like, well, all right. And here's the thing. Why am I making this? Why am I bringing this up? Because these are the people that so many women were like, these are the loudest voices in the room. And these are the voices that you and I and everybody else who's trying to get something accomplished don't need to pay any attention to. I did the smoke show the other day and one young lady said, well, what, well, what can you do about these angry women like Jigsaw? They're out here. And can we raise their ranking? Can we do something? I said, no, leave them alone. That's what you do with these people, folks. You smile and you leave them alone. You lead your life and you do what you do what you're going to do. And you go out and be happy. Because they're not tr- folks like this, folks that are angry all the time, want to drag you down to their level and kick your butt with experience. Now that was funny. And go through the comment section. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but then what did I do? What did I do after that? What did I do? Like 12 hours later, I said, you know what? Let's go ahead and do what I'm going to do anyway. And there is a full length picture. Seems some slow, slow. Yep. Seems some slow people need simple instructions. Logic, spatial order. And perspective distortion should not have to be explained to grown people. Now, should not be explained to grown people. 
Now, what you see is a black man who's six foot four wearing boots. And I'm even taller in those. I'm standing on the, I'm standing, she's standing on the curb and the street is sloped. And she's in what, four inch heels or higher? Maybe even six inch. I don't know how. But anyway, she's funny. She was funny. And the point is, the point is, give them something to talk about. People who have no lives will always seek to talk about folks like you that are trying to live a life. Important. When you are becoming a high value man, a productive, competitive, successful man, a feminine, beautiful, inspirational woman, a fit, feminine and friendly woman, you need to understand this one thing and understand it well. Never show your personal life to the public because they will destroy it. Save your personal life for your personal people. Keep it off Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Do business in these places. You need to move in a way that people can see your results without trying to tear down what you've built. Because more often than not, they can't get to you, but they will try to get to people around you. They will try to tear people around you down. Now, understand something. This is a black woman that these so many women were going after. Now, which is it? Is it the sisterhood or is it? It doesn't matter because she's standing there. And all the questions, what's going on? What's this? What's that? None of your business. None of your business. What's going on? And this is how you move when you're developing power, guys. What draws women to men is status, power. Money is just a representation of those status and power. And powerful men collect favors and secrets. And they understand that they move in a different way. You better, you better learn how to take the slings and arrows. You better learn how to deal with the pressure and keep it moving and understand that the only person you need to please is you and those you deem important because you cannot make everyone happy. You got to stay true to yourself and do what's do and move inside your purpose. Moving inside of your purpose, you never run out of anything. And of course, I have a principle. I try to spread things around because when you help others get what they want, you'll get what you want by extension. Why is this important? Ladies, so many of you today will find any reason to be angry at men. I wanted to use the H word here, but I think it's a little too much. But modern women, you will find any, almost any reason to be angry with men in general or a man in particular. Why? You know why, folks? Because it's an emotion. It's an emotion. And when you have nothing going on in your life, and any emotion will do. We're going to open the call line because I want to know what y'all are so angry about. Why y'all? So, why are some of y'all so angry? I want to know why some of you guys are so angry today. And I also want to say this too. Let me go ahead and let me adjust this because it said happy. He just said angry. I want to adjust this because I want to deal. I want to hear from the from you ladies. Why are you so angry? Why? Ten thousand folks in here, people. We need to. Uh, oh man, we're going. Uh, we have done two, three, four. If this is your first time here, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All I ask is that when you're in here, you be respectful of the chat room. You know, don't mess with anybody who doesn't want to who doesn't want to talk to you. Uh, and if you've been here regularly, uh, throw something in the tip jar. This is Super Bowl Sunday. And this week is going to be a tough week. 
Welcome to Valentine's week. And you're going to see some of the angriest behavior from women for this week. Because this week is the final week of failure. This week started back in Halloween. When Halloween was over, we went into holiday season. In holiday season, many women had to spend it by themselves with, <coughs> with their dogs. And they're upset. They had, to, they had no one to eat Thanksgiving dinner with. They, had, they got no Christmas gifts from anybody. Even if there was something to do on New Year's, they had nothing to do in Hallow and Valentine's Day. They would spend alone or they will even do it this way. Shout out to Galentine's Day. They will be spending Galentine's Day. What is Galentine's Day? I'm glad you asked. Galentine's Day is, a de- is something put together to make women feel not bad about being single. Galentine's Day, Gal Valentine, women hanging out with each other in groups so you don't have to feel bad. I'm sorry. I want to bring all that back. I want to bring back the notion of, yes, getting together sooner rather than later. I want to bring back the notion that men and women are different, not the same, not just fundamentally different and appreciating the fact that men can be men and women can be women. Stop trying to make men women. And one thing we need to start bringing back is some shame. Some consequence. Do what you want to do in your life, but don't try to get everybody to just act like nothing happened. It's like the woman said, I'm an alpha female and there's nothing wrong with it. You're absolutely right. Nothing wrong being an alpha female. Not at all. But just don't, don't moan and complain about your outcomes. Ladies. Never show your personal life. Always find a reason to be upset with men today. Understand, gentlemen, when you have these conversations in a chat room, in your life, whatever, it ain't about you. When you're dealing with people who are angry all the time, whether it's projection, whether it's deflection, the actual person they're mad or upset with is in the mirror. And they don't necessarily know how to deal with these emotions. So I'll take it. Because think about it. How many women have been so angry with I'm like, the women I talk to aren't as angry as some of the women who call themselves advocating for them. Shout out to this one brother. He said, I talked to one of the ladies you talked to. And she, you know, everybody was saying big ups. Yeah, girl, you told him you stood on your square, whatever, whatever. And he said, you know, when we were, when we finally got away from everybody, she said, you know what? When I sat down and had time with myself after talking to Kevin, I realized that the reason I am where I am in my life right now is because everybody tells me what I want to hear. Everybody validates me and it doesn't work. What he was telling me actually is going to help me. Well, here's the thing you need to do, ma'am. You need to say that in public. Two things need to happen. More ladies need to start coming out and saying, I'm not happy. I am angry. I'm lost. I'm confused. I don't know how to do this. I want help. I need help. And I'll need a different outcome. You know, in church, they used to have a call an altar call. In church, that's what they used to do. Come on down. Come on down to the altar call. Now, I'm not trying to be sacrilegious, but you understand what I'm saying. They would say, you don't need to know God. You don't need to know the Bible. Just come on. Just turn your life over to God. Well, ladies, what you're doing ain't working. And having other women tell you those guys are bad. He's mean. He's this. He's that. They got nothing for you. Like I said, that's what they're coming after next. They're coming next. They're coming after you, ladies. And they're coming after saying, your ladies don't go over there. And they're coming after saying, and that he and you guys shouldn't support it either. He's bad for this. You got to really question somebody. Who wants you to stay stuck so they can stay comfortable? So let's get to it. One of the things that helped me the most in my life is admitting I didn't know something. I don't know how to do this. One of my best friends in the world will tell you, one of the things that he impressed him the most 
When I came, when when I, I would say, I don't know. I don't know. Matter of fact, I suck at that. I know what I suck at. And the things that I suck at, I don't know. And I'm willing to learn to get better. Active. Ladies, if you want, to, if you want life to work better, you need to admit what you don't know. And look for a different outcome. Well, why should we listen to a guy who divorced twice? Because the best person to listen to is the person get results. I'm sorry, but you angry people, you're angry because if people start to move on and get something better outcome, you ain't going to have nobody to talk to. <laughs> Like, oh, no, no, we need everybody to stay stuck. We need everybody to stay in their same place. I've actually had somebody try to blame the whole gender war on me. Come on, man. Ladies, this week is Valentine's week. You have no Valentine. You haven't had a Valentine since high school. You've had Netflix and chill situationships. You 27 to 35 in the danger zone. You got no viable prospect to be anybody's wife. You in no man's land. And now you're having to hold tight, ladies. This is gonna hurt. Once you get out of no man, once you get out of the danger zone, you go into what's called geriatric pregnancy. Women over 35 have geriatric pregnancies. Let's say it all in the chat room. Everybody say it together. Geriatric pregnancy. Geriatric pregnancy. Like geritol, geriatric. Geriatric pregnancy. So women keep telling women, are you saying you shouldn't tell women that they don't need to go to school? They don't need to do that? No, you don't. You need to do it all at the same time because you got a biological clock and it's foolish for women to sit back and put and postpone marriage and family until after this career, you're going to give up anyway. Let's talk about it. A lot of you ladies are angry because you've been lied to. You got these degrees that you don't want to use and jobs that you call in careers. And at the end of the day, you don't have anything other than bills, debt, and a bottle of wine and some tissue. Who you mad at? You mad at me because I'm actually acknowledging the fact that you were lied to? Or you mad at your, your mama, your sister, your grandma? Who you mad at? Because some of these folks who talk about me, uh, they got nothing for you. And that's why I'll never mention them. And I hear about it, but I'm like, it's all in the same category. My biggest detractors are going to be these kinds of people. Women who are eternal sevens. That means women who are always cute and above, you know, eternal sevens. They're not adjustable sixes. Eternal sevens are the girls, the women who are left after the eights, nines and tens get snapped up. And, you know, they were always, you know, close enough to be getting into VIP, but not quite fine enough. Always like runner up to the homecoming queen, just almost there, almost there. You know, Tina's almost there. And she's mad because she's almost there. He's Molly on Insecure, almost there. And then once they overplay their hand, mismanage their situation or whatever, on purpose or not irrelevant, they're angry. And their choices in life because they're in their mid thirties or forties. Well, early to mid thirties on the cusp of 40. So from like 33 to 39, this well, 33 to 39 are some of my most virulent critics because they still look in the mirror and they see that 25 year old thing, but they have been through hell. They have been through relationship hell. I watched a movie on the plane night last night called 1917. And I want you to go watch that movie and understand that their relationship life is like those two soldiers getting those orders 
to go through the trenches, go across no man's land and find the battalion to call off the attack. And what those soldiers had to go through, that's their relational life. And they're mad because they got all that on them. But at the end of the day, many of these women who are angry are like so many women I've talked to. When the truth comes out, the tears start to flow. And it's like, I really don't want to have to do this. I really want somebody I can just chill to be myself with, not have to do this and do that. And they know that's true, but they can't say it because they're afraid that their friends will call them weak or say, girl, you don't need no man or whatever. So you got a bunch of women like this lying to each other because not no one's brave enough to stand up and say, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. All it would take is one of you in the group to stand up and say, I'm sick of this crap. And really mean it. Because somebody's going to have to stop the madness in your groups of women. Because until you stop the madness, the madness will continue to infect one another and the anger will continue to grow. Y'all are like the Incredible Hulk on this shit. The angrier he gets, the stronger you get, but the, the, but the more you repel people from you. To so talk about I'm single by choice and I chose to be alone. It's not a choice if nobody want to choose you. But you know what? Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe I don't. Mm -mm. Maybe I don't. Let's get the comment lines open. Let's get the comment lines open. Let's get the comment lines open. Because I will tell you this. Um, when you're around a woman who's happy, it's a completely different vibe. When you're around a woman who's generally feminine, cooperative, completely different vibe. Completely different vibe. They move in a completely different way. They're a pleasure and a joy to be around. Oh, and they exist. And women like that are starting to make their presence known. Just like men are starting to make their presence known. Hey, man, I want I want to pay the cost to be the boss. I want to do A, B, and C. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um, I'm going to be talking to ladies today. Why are you so angry? Who are you angry with? <laughs> and taking it out on me? Taking it out on men like myself ain't going to change anything. It's not going to change anything because uh, I'm sorry. We didn't do it to you. We didn't do it to you. We can try to help you through it, but we did not do it to you. Mm, mm -hmm. Let's do it this way. New Money World Girls will start on the first part of March. If you want to submit your Money World dance, go ahead and do that. Let's get it. Luna. Money World. El mundo quiere dinero. Shout out to my next ex wife, baby mamas, telling these women that their life is over because they got a baby. No, never said that. Telling these women they can't go to school. Ain't nobody gonna want it. Didn't say that. 
aceptación Tampoco vengo a pedir perdón Porque mis sentimientos se volvieron la canción Women only Me vale mucho como tú me ves Sabes tú me llegas solo a los pies Para mí ser grande es un interés Ser un buen humano para mí es un deber El dinero ya lo veré No vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De donde vengo ni como voy Money work Por el taco bueno. Taco bueno. Se arregla con dinero. Money work. De corazón. De corazón. La plata no te hace ser feliz. Ella es de corazón. De corazón. Money work. El mundo quiere dinero. Yeah 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 yeah. Money work. Money work. Money work. Money work. Se arregla con dinero. Money work. Luna. Luna. Lunático. Oh, yes, I'm so short. I'm so tiny, 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 Tim, tiny, 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 man, any, oh, any argument will do though, right? All right, ladies, here's what we're going to do. Uh, should need to be explained as well, but I'll say it just for, uh, if you decide to get on the show, you can't be on the show. Getting over here, if you want to talk to me, you know that you are going to be on the program and your voice, your image, and your likeness will be used and you give your implied consent by appearing on this show. Not that I need to say that, but I just want to make it clear because I'm starting to realize that some folks just a little different. Just a little different. Like, <gasps> What? I didn't know I could be seen. It's YouTube. It's YouTube. Why are you so angry, ladies? Why are you so pissed off? I'm mad. Now, I will say this too. I'm gonna need you ladies to get your stuff together in the chair in the in the call in, the, in, in with the with your audio. I shouldn't have to keep asking y'all to unmute yourself and turn out the background noise. You're gonna need to get on camera. Um, let's see, let's see who we got first. All right. Do, 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 do. Moderators keep putting it in there. <laughs> They're hiding that face. You can't hide that. You can't hide that. You can't hide it. You can't hide you. So, the prize. Deborah, unmute yourself. <clears throat> And Deborah went away. All righty. <clears throat> Vanessa, mute yourself. Unmute yourself. All right. Do 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 do. What's going on here? Mm mm mm. Boom, 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 boom. Aaron, unmute yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> Aaron. Okay. I don't know what...
in the in the Zoom call. You guys need to pay attention. When I ask you to unmute yourself, you need to unmute yourself. Let's call it two. <clears throat> Hold on, folks. In the in the Zoom call, you guys. Need- yep, I can still hear me. So I don't know. It seems like people are joining in and bumping out. Dana. Dana, unmute yourself. Hello. How are you? Uh I don't know why this dude is here. Just a second. Uh he, he's like, hey Dion, this says women only, homie. What do you got for me? Why are you so angry, Dana? I don't know if I would say I'm angry. Uh I've been watching you now. I want to say like six months and I've been just like binge watching everything. And Banner, you're next. I don't know if I'm so angry. I just feel like kind of tired. Tired? With a lot of stuff that I feel like I I do need to do is I need to turn off YouTube or anything else you have in the background because I can hear my voice. Okay. It should be all set now. Okay, yeah, you got to shut those windows down. How old are you? I am 32. Uh, Would you happen to have any children? I have a son, and he is uh, 15. Okay. Banner, you're next, then Glenda. uh, He's how old? 15. And you're 32? Yes. You jumped off the porch early. Yes, I did. (laughs) So what are you tired of? Um... I, I know I'm trying. I'm going to go ahead and hit you right there. I'm going, I'm going, I need to get like a whack-a-mole sign every time I hear that smoke detector. Oh, I know. Yes. That, so yeah. I'm, That's I'm, the single I'm, woman tell. Yes. It's a single woman is. tell. <laughs> okay. Wh- where's his father? His father is around. Okay. When was the last relationship you had? I've been out of a relationship for four years. How long did that, per- how long did that last though? The relationship was for five years. Okay. So you've been out for four, you were in for five. So that's nine years total. Why didn't why didn't you get married? Uh he didn't want to get married. And when did you find that out? What year did you find that out? I think you, like year three. No. No. No, <laughs> no, I'm talking to a single mother. You knew year one, he didn't want to be married. You knew that. Come on, man. Be honest. I guess man. that is true. I mean, I, you're talking to, you're talking to other women and you're talking to other women that are here. You got a single mother who jumped off the porch early and you're saying you didn't know until year three. So. But even if that's the case, why'd you go to year five? I don't know. After watching your videos, I realized, like you said, I knew and I just, I guess it was easy and comfortable and kind of stayed in it. Well, unfortunately, um, that happens. Um, but you've been apart for four years. What mm-hmm. have you been doing this last four years? School. Oh, Lord. Um, it's the school thing. And see, Mm -hmm. this is why people get upset with me when I talk about school. And this is my problem with school. School acts as a relationship, uh, numbing agent for, for women in relationships. I won't go into relationships and I'll go to school and I'll do that for two to four years and look up and think you'll be able to do relationship after that. When you should have been doing that in time. Are you in therapy? I started therapy, yes. How long have you been in? Uh, I want to say like two or three months. Not too long, but okay. I did start. Yeah, well, yeah. 
Banner, you're gonna be so. What do you want? I want to be married. I listened to your show and um, I really sat down and asked myself, like, is this what I want? And I do want to be married. I want to be a wife. I also feel like the things that you say husbands are looking for. I don't know if I was taught those things. Okay. How to be feminine, how to be inspirational, all those things. It was just like, I was taught you work hard, you make money. Uh So you can be secure. Right. Because you didn't have a dad growing up, right? I had a dad. uh, He just wasn't around consistently. You didn't have a dad growing up? He was in the house. Him and my mom were married. And he was in the house until I was maybe seven. Okay, so here's the the thing. All right. But here's what I'm concerned about. You know, one, yeah, you, you grew up taught to take care of yourself. And you work hard, but that doesn't make you happy. No. Obviously. No, it doesn't make you happy. And then you got a boy. Is his father in his life? Not consistently. Okay. And I've been trying um, since been listening to your show more. Been He's trying. 16. Yeah. It's almost, it's too late for that. I mean, he has to make his own relationship with his, his dad now. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not too late, but. He is pretty much the man he's going to be. Okay. And um, he probably also needs some, it would also be a good idea to get him some therapy. Yep. He's in therapy right now too. He's okay. been in longer than I've been in therapy. Cool. Cause there's so many things going on here. And the thing is in order to have any semblance of a normal life, uh, meaning with a partner, you're going to have to first find, what you are, can and you're willing to bring to a man um, and, and and find a man who's who can accept those things. I mean, do you want to have any more children? Yes. Oh, wow. That's pretty complex. 32 with a 16-year-old and you want to have kids? What state are you in? I'm in Massachusetts. Hmm. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm going to come back. Shoot that damn smoke detector, though. You need to to come get some. You need to pay $50 to get somebody to change that tomorrow. Hold on. (laughs) God, dog. You ladies, man. Vanna, what's going on? Hi. um, I just wanted to say thank you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You don't sound angry. What's wrong with you? Well, (laughs) there's a lot wrong with me. Um, Um, I'm actually... I actually wanted to say thank you for the content that you share. Uh, I think it takes a lot of courage to speak up like this in this time period that we live in and with a lot of people that are going to get emotional. Um, I can't say I'm really angry right now, but there was a point in my life that I was filled with a lot of rage, um, Mm -hmm. a lot of anger. And I had to do a lot of inner work and I'm still, I'm, I'm still constantly working on myself. Um, And I think a lot of the anger comes from, one pain, like for me at least, I have to say it came from pain. How old are you? I'm 36 right now. Okay, you need to turn off the YouTube in the background, or do you have YouTube nothing, on? Okay, no, then turn down. Am I on speakerphone? You, uh, yes, because if I okay. take you off, okay, well, you're well, on you the- do, no, okay, well, just turn me down a little bit on your speakerphone. Oh, sure. Like two ticks. There you go. All okay. right. So what's Is long? Relation- yeah, what's the longest relationship you've been in? The longest relationship was four and a half years. All right. And, when and that was about eight years ago. Wow. Yeah. Uh, um, I've actually do you have any been children? Single. Sorry. Do you have any children? No, I don't. And you're 30 what again? I am 36. Do you want to be married? I do. I do want to be married. Kids? And I just realized that over the last year. Any? You want kids? I I've always wanted to adopt or foster, um, but I, I I now that I'm here, I'm realizing I do want to have children. Yes. So you want to have your own? Your own? Um, in all honesty, ideally, I would like to adopt or foster. The ra- the reasoning behind that, I don't want to sound like some kind of a saint. I just feel like there's a lot of kids in this world that really really need love and need that. And I'm let me, more let, me than- help, let me let me help you out here though. Sure. What state do you live in? I live in Canada, actually. I'm in British Columbia. All right. 
So at 36 years old. Yes. You want your ideal situation would to be able to find a man. Um, do you want to, do you want to have to work after you adopt these children? Yes. I actually don't ever planning plan on completely stop working. What percentage of the household financial load would you like to carry? That's everything. What percentage? Oh, would I like to, I honestly, I'm, I'm of the 50, 50 mindset. So I would really love to um, be able to provide at least 50% of the entire financial load. Yes. All right. Um, Are you looking to marry a man who's older than you? Uh, I'm. I'm honestly. I'm open to older. Uh, not so much younger. Uh, old. Well, more. How much, I would how much older? older. How much older? Um, I'm open to up to ten years older. Just ten? Oh, I didn't even think past ten, to be honest. Well, okay. The way you're coming across is an assertive woman. Fine. Yes. But that works in business. It doesn't work in relationships. Yeah, I agree with you. You know what you want. Mm -hmm. But men who are marrying, I got news for you. They Mm -hmm. tend to want for the risk a man undertakes in the West for marrying a woman. They want to at least get their own by their own seed into the next generation. Right. Without a biological child, mm-hmm. many men do not see the value in marriage. Yeah. Point, point, point blank with period. You, yes. So yes. if you're talking about wanting to foster because or adopt because other kids, the, because their children need that. I'm telling you how many men think about it. They're like, yeah, I need to make my own kids. I don't want to take over somebody else's kid because it's still like being a stepdad. Right. And I don't think you ladies really understand how that impacts a man. He's going out to make himself the best version of himself to go raise another man's child. This is not how nature works. Even if you're willing to be a 50-50 partner, he still doesn't get his kid out of it. Right. So I understand that at 36, there may be limited options, mm-hmm. or but if you're not really going to consider having your own biological child. Oh, no, sorry. I didn't mean to come off as I'm not considering it. I absolutely, I, I'm, I'm Well, I've more asked you three times reality. and you've said, I've, I've said it as three times, you said, adoption or foster not once did you say i want to have a baby i think i think that is coming from my lack mindset i'm like i said i'm still a work in progress i am um, i think for me i'm thinking i'm 36 years old um what is the likelihood of me finding so i, I well if you ain't having I, no I, baby I don't think you're I not have if you're not having this baby the likelihood of finding somebody to marry is, gets diminished substantially right yeah i'm just being honest because most yeah. men in the west have heard of have seen the horror stories. The fifty plus right. percent divorce rate and women initiating seven or eight, ten, seven or eight out of ten divorces. If a man is not going to at least get a child out of it, he's basically coming in saying, even in a fifty fifty scenario, limited resources. <laughs> I'm wasting time and potentially a portion of my resources to get what to still be a stepfather. Right. Me, and what I'm saying is. This is why my show does what it does. I understand you ladies know what you want, but do you mm-hmm. ladies think you ladies don't seem to understand what men want? Yeah, what you're, you're the, right. So you're right. At thirty six, the kind of man you want, what does he want from a woman? What you just said. He would want children, ideally. Um, the all the other stuff that you spoke about the the fun, feminine, fit. All of that stuff. Um, now, um, how tall are you? Are, are you fit? Uh, I definitely did gain about 10 pounds over the last few months. <laughs> um, I'm five foot three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I weigh 131 at the moment. I mean, I can see that you're, you're, but the thing is, 
where is the the where is the femininity where's the softness um you you honestly you hit the nail on the head this is actually something i'm working on very actively right now because mm -hmm. i definitely definitely am in my masculine and i have been most where's of your my family life. Where, where's your where, where where are you from or where are your people from um my background i'm sri lankan i was born in india uh-huh that's um unusual. my my dad left about left the family about 10 uh, oh, no, you, actually, thirteen years now. Is that is that you? Is that are you are the majority of the minority? Because most of the women I know from, in, uh, from who are Indian are pretty feminine. Yeah, um, it's true. Uh, I'm probably the. I am definitely the minority, or at least I think I am. I, I guess I don't know everyone. So, so was this? But... Was this? Was this? Did, so was it? Were you taught this in your upbringing, or did you learn this? Yeah, and unfortunately, I definitely was taught this in my upbringing. My parents always jokingly introduced me as their firstborn son. Okay. Um, they, I also saw the firstborn the son that dudes wanted to have sex with. <laughs> I was pretty young at the time, but yeah, yeah but, your, but your body parts still worked. I mean, you went to college, right? I did. I did. All right. So after college, you had a choice. Yes. And... Okay. I absolutely messed up my choices. Well, um, I mean, in the okay, so I, so one, yeah. Are you working with a therapist now? I am. I am. Are you okay? And, that, and that's a clinician. Are you working with a female, someone to help you on your feminine journey? Um. So I don't have anyone tangible in person, but I do. I'm. I've. This is something new to me. So over the last year, I've really been focusing on. Uh, women that are in their feminine and watching their videos, I've reached out to one, a life coach, um, right. just so I can work on that aspect as well. Because I honestly, right. I completely agree with you. I'm totally in my masculine. It's actually one of my insecurities now because I, I uh -huh. don't know how to switch out of it. And I'm trying. I'm working on those things. But you were able to pick up within like a minute of talking to me. So right. that means... I picked it up. In that. I, mean, I, just, I do this for a living though. So right, right. I mean, I, most masculine men, most women get in their feminine by being around masculine men, but most masculine men would just go the opposite way because in today's environment, women like yourself, um, where we used to could sit around and talk to you, there's two, the legal issues and legal ramifications. So I would say this, mm -hmm. yeah, clinician is great, the femininity instructor, that kind of stuff, because just even in our communication, it is just, it is just direct. And then, and Sorry, the, it's and just, and I, it's just direct. And I'm gonna tell you what it, what it registers to me as a mm -hmm. masculine man is like, okay, let's just go have sex, and I'm gonna leave. That's what it okay. registers to me. It registers to me as though she would be great in bed. This we can mm, have fun, okay. but then after that, there's no way I could deal with this woman past orgasm. Okay, I'm being dead honest. And right, unfortunately, that doesn't serve you well in the outcomes you want, and it, and that also limits or diminishes who you are or could be by right. by you coming across masculine and you're going to always get not always but you're likely going to get the short end of a relational stick or or even worse mm -hmm. attract beta males weak men right who need somebody who's stronger than them to lead them and so all right well um you know i'm let me let me think about that. But all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get on to the next person. Appreciate you being on. Well, honest. thank you so much. Bye right, bye. Bye. Yeah, Sri Lanka. Uh, you know, you know. Mm. If you're a femininity instructor, uh, do me a favor. If you're a femininity instructor, um, in the comment section, leave your. Actually, don't do that. Even better, if you're a femininity instructor. Email me. I need to start putting some of these resources together for people uh, outside of uh, the traditional stuff. Um, yeah. I don't want to say what I want to say right now, but because it will come across the wrong way. Um, Trish. 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 Yep. Yes, sir. Hi. How are you? Hi. How are you? I'm Why are you so angry? Well, you know what I'm really angry about. Um, I'm angry because Kai and Danielle. You, Kai then Danielle. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm angry because, as you mentioned in the beginning, 
of your video. You got all these people, mainly women, in the comment section talking so much smack, but they will they won't call in and be upfront with you what they really angry about. Okay. And you said something that you know I think everybody knows. Some women are mad. Honestly, I did used to be mad. And what I was mad about is because I was fooled by my mama. Like you said, your mama, your aunties, your cousins, sisters, every woman in your family going to tell you what a man's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, Big Mama been taking care of Papa since way back when, when Black men was not getting no jobs. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So for the uh, elders to tell the, you know the new generation a man supposed to do a b c but they daddy ain't never hit a lick at a stick right and that they mama like you been a fool so i'm not gonna be the fool mm -hmm. and so what they try to do is go out there and like you said get that education now i don't have a phd i got a ged and i'm not ashamed mm -hmm. let me tell you why once I realized when I, when I left school, I got out of school because I had a you know situation going on. Dropped out of school, um, I refused education because I felt like by my father the way he raised me, you need money. So yes, women are going for the money because they can't get that second income in their household. But like you said, that's just a substitute for a man. But at the end of the how, day, you how old are you? I am 50. Well, I'm 49. I'll be 50 this year. Oh, yeah. You were raised smack dab in Generation X. Yep. Yeah. I'm at the end of that. That And see, I'm angry also because um, I was raised by an angry black woman. Hmm. And I realized I didn't want to be an angry black woman. I made a conscious effort to not be angry. So once I started living my life with joy and trying to spread the joy, all the black women turned on me. So now I don't have no black female friends. My mama can't stand me because I am this nice person. Okay. Wow. And I smile all the tell, time. Tell them that again. I don't think they believe, they wouldn't believe me if I said that. Well, that's why I'm angry too. And I'm not angry because of what's going on with the men. But my thing is the men have a, a right just like a woman has the right to do what they want to do with their life and their body, the men do too. So for what angers me also is that women put on the facade that they got it all together. And then once they pull your drawers down, it's a whole different, you know. So, so, so when you decided you wanted to just be a little bit lighter and go through life happier, yes. you made enemies out of your mother and your family? And friends, yeah. My mama used to tell me, what you smiling for? You ain't got nothing to be smiling about and all this. You know, it was just like, oh, oh yeah, I know. Black, black women would just come at me like strong, like you think you all let and then that because I'm gonna be honest and I'm not ashamed. My life is an open book. I dropped out of school. I didn't go to college. Um, I got mm -hmm. in these streets. I'm gonna be mm -hmm. real honest. I got in these streets. I was trying to do everything. I was trying to make money like men make money because mm -hmm. my thing is men making the money. I'm gonna do what they do and get the same money they do. I want to drive trucks, sell dope. You know what I'm saying? All that. I was trying to do all of that. My life took a drastic turn because I said I wasn't gonna be that woman who was gonna carry the load. And a lot of women is angry because I ain't gonna say they've been duped, but on the on the Lighter side, I ain't gonna say y'all because people don't like mm. that word. Women mm -hmm. have been duped because they got that Cinderella syndrome because everybody been telling them since they was a kid, they, oh, you go get married, get married, you have a family and have a baby. And then as soon as a woman gets old enough to start having sex, quit talking to that boy, get off that phone. I want no men over here. Da 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 da. So, you know, yeah. I'm gonna have to do a follow up show to this one because yes, I need to tackle this whole topic on. This mother sister thing, oh, yeah. uh, but I'm gonna have to. I'm going on to the next person. I appreciate this. Yes, sir. She said a whole lot, man, and 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 I've been saying this for the longest that women face so much pressure from women to stay upset. 
That's why I say, guys, understand something. For the men who want a different outcome with women, this is where you're going to have to give them some grace and some mercy and some cover fire because they're basically flipping sides. And like you heard the woman say, her, her family members turned on her. Well, what do you think she's going to come going to want to come over here and talk to men if she's getting it from all sides? And here's the thing. I get Generation X was lied to. I understand. But the world doesn't owe us understanding. We are not supposed to be at war with one another like this. And the notion that just because women are trying to be. She said it. What you smiling for? People are going to hear that and be like, what? I've heard that. I've heard women, I've heard women talk about that. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into my personal life, but when I'm telling you, when you see groups of, you know, 13 women in a family, 13 beautiful women and 11 of them are single and three generations, that's a problem. Kaya. What you so, what you so mad about? <laughs> Why are you so angry, Kaya? Oh my goodness. It's just Kai. Um Kai. nice to meet you. Kai. I have been stalking you. Um, not really, but I've got turned on to you about two months ago, and I think I've watched almost all of your videos. Yeah, well, that's right. Um, but I think I have a different perspective. Well, let me start with your question of why I'm mad. I'm mad because nobody told me what you're telling me. Um Okay. How old are you? 30 years ago. I'm 40. Okay. And um, Generation X. Okay. Hmm? Generation X. Go ahead. Yes. And um, unlike a lot of women who've called in, I was raised in a two family home. Um, my father uh, is <laughs> your Kappa brother and is 88 years old. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> 88? He's, oh, Jesus. He's silent but, generation. Yes. And, um, you know, both my parents are professors and they told me to just, you know, my dad, keep your eye on the prize. Well, yeah. You will meet somebody along the way. You will meet somebody. Why do, you, why, do you, why do you think he did that? I think because he wanted me like, like you said, like so many of these other women to never rely on a man and to be, because he felt like women who rely on men put themselves in situations to be abused or are is he still um, your father see what i find with when when you have that big a gap between parents yeah i find that fathers want to give their daughters advice because they don't feel like they're going to live to see most of their daughters lives they're worried about your survival not your happiness mm -hmm. so that's definitely where he is now but i don't know if he was like that when i was you know in undergrad for example but, so but there's a he's 88 and you're 40 yes so he was four he was almost 50 when you were born Lord exactly mm -hmm. it's a different mm -hmm. calculus i mean um but he told you to keep your head down go to school and you'll find love yes yeah, you'll find someone who's like-minded he was always afraid i'd fall for a thug you know i was into the bad boys in but, high school. Si but silent generation that's kind of, that's how it happened it happened in that generation. Yeah. It, you I know, agree. Right. It did. So they, they were born. He was born in what, 32? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm good with math. So he was born in 32. So, yeah, keep your head down. And if you go. Right, because that's how he met my mother. They're both professors. Um, you know, she was she works for sure. Mm -hmm. Um and was like the leader of our household of our child rearing, I would say. Uh -huh. He was the financial leader. But how many um, siblings do you have? The Southern Belle from Arkansas. So I feel like I have my femininity. How many siblings um, do you have? Two, two brothers. Okay. One uh, older, one younger. Mm -hmm. Is your mother pledge a sorority? Yes, she's a Delta, as am I, and both of my brothers are Catholics. Holy <laughs> shit. Okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> Give me a second. Yes. We have several oh PhDs in our family. Several. <laughs> it's the unholy alliance. Kappa <laughs> and Delta. Mm -hmm. That either it's goes strange. exceptionally well or exceptionally wild. <laughs> There's too much red in one house. Um, 
Whoo! All right, so your your brother's a leg. You're a legacy. Your your mom was a Delta. You're a Delta. Yes. Your father's a noob. Your brother's a noob. Are your brothers married? Um, one is going through a separation, and the other is not married. No. Okay. So what do you? Okay. So you were lied to at forty. I was lying to you know very young. We now were all lied to. Saying, we were all Why lied aren't you to. married? Now he's like, I don't understand. <laughs> who said? Who's who's asking that question? My dad. <laughs> well, because he okay, he's asking that question because he's coming from a silent generation calculus. He doesn't understand that, even though he's seen it, he doesn't have experience with it makes no sense to them why we you're not married because it's supposed to be simple what do you what state do you live in oh that 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 is definitely there we go come on come on come on come on connecticut oh damn um mm-hmm. uh how long have you been there uh like 15 years well, well uh, huh well i was trying to leave and then i did the thing i got into a phd program <laughs> stayed even longer I'm a PhD. now Call him um, Dr. White. See? See? I know. <laughs> PhD. Right. Connecticut. Where's the dog? I, I, I was very tempted to get one. Oh, <laughs> especially since COVID. <laughs> right. So I you're in Connecticut no out kids. there. You're in Connecticut in the suburbs with your PhD. And everybody else is living that life. So... um. Why not move? Well, honestly, a lot of my sorors, they're my friends and they're single too. And a lot of them are older than I am. And most of them are single. And I was right, talking I gotta, about I gotta, a while okay, ago. Okay, so let me help you out now. Mm-hmm. And this is about blood sport. If you got to kneecap one of these sorors to get to a man, you don't need to do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, ladies, make no. Huh? there is one kappa who's interested i don't i mean what i'm but saying is someone. what i'm saying is so many of you ladies try to do this instead of getting your ass in the life wrapped yourself you try to make sure you can all get to the wrap and y'all can't all fit in you're in connecticut at 40 years old in the pandemic uh new york city is one state new york or manhattan is one state. yeah it's only an hour, hour okay but do, where do you work do you work remotely right like now about, yes okay so carry your ass into manhattan and work remotely and be around all the single people just get up and move okay or die alone I'm very frank. I mean, I'm I'm talking about moving either to New York or maybe LA. Yes. See, this is what I need our black women to understand. You guys are very good about going after your PhDs and your careers and everything else. And then you expect men to disappear out of nowhere. You're in do you want a black man? Only. Well, who the French toast lives in Connecticut? <laughs> Even people in Vermont are like what? Well, New you better Hayes, carry your ass to Brooklyn or Harlem or something. You better go on back. That's, okay. You're right. No, you're right. All the all the high value a, here are married. Well, I know who exactly they are. Exactly, because that's where, where you go to marry. That's mm-hmm. where you go after you get married. If I yeah. moved up there, I would have my family in Connecticut. Well, maybe not. I'm a city guy. <laughs> but the point is, you have your sorrows, and y'all all have the same thing. How many of your sororities? How many of them are single? Are you talking about one, two, three, four, five? How many of them? Oh, I have like my whole clique. It's like single women, and I've been hanging out. With them. Give me a number. Uh, let's say six. Okay, six. If I threw one man in front of you, one's gonna get the one will get him. The other five are bridesmaids. Go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean. Well, what you what you gonna be, what you gonna do? I'm so gonna go. Front... Oh, I'm definitely gonna go. Okay, you gonna break somebody's jaw? Well, they're yeah. older and they they have. Okay, they have then you gonna break a hip? It might be easier. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're but... giving up. They're like they're. How much old are we talking? They're in their fifties, a lot of them, and they're convinced that you know they don't want to be married. I don't right. believe it. Right, right. Because um, they're miserable and like right. right. You know, and about... but there's a couple that are actually 
like maybe one or two of them that I think are actually happy single, but the others I do think they wish they. So had. Uh, are they are they uh, fit? N- no. There you go. So it's not as though they've given up. They have no real options because if they were still fit from 40 to 50, put a man that's a high value man in front of all of you. And I guarantee you their tunes would change. But when you cannot get him, it's easier to say, I don't want him because you feel the fitness criteria. This is why I don't understand with so many women today. Men want fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive. And if you feel the fitness component, the whole notion of high value goes out the window for the most part. And I don't understand why so many women today cannot stay fit when you're single with no kids. Makes no sense. But you in particular, you got a choice to make. Your family gave you the best information they could, but you're 40 years old. You've been on your own. You've been, you've been responsible for you for the last 22 years. When was your last serious or long-term relationship? Like 10 years ago. Was Holy shit. Yeah. I was engaged. Okay. But 10 years ago, did they discover fire? Did, have, did y'all have fire back then, or did they just now discover it? <laughs> ten years? Come on, mom. I mean, serious. I, I'm, be, I'm, I'm being, being serious, dated, but it's been ten but, years. Yeah, a serious relationship. I was in a three years situation ship that I knew wasn't going anywhere. So what? I didn't well, yeah. But you knew it wasn't going. It. Hmm. All right. No bad decision. And see, women get upset with me when I say that whole die alone thing is because so many of our women just date unintentionally. So now with all this experience, I'm a lover, Kevin, you are like so practical and I'm not learning. I'm a lover, you know, I, how's that working out for you? (laughs) Your father made a practical decision in your mother. (laughs) Yes, he did. He did. It's not being a lover. See, we we romanticize these things. I don't care about love at 40. You need to get respect and somebody who's going to give you your insulin shot. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> I mean, love went away 3 years after the pro after the, after you crossed line. That was over for tw- at 25 love was kind of 25 27. That's Seriously, at 40 All the mistakes, everything. uh, Okay, you have 40. You still have half of a life left. What you going to do? That's why I'm calling you because I, I, and I'm listening. I got the move to New York, you know, memo. I want to know what can I do at this point? Well, this is a, this is a, this is a, this is a show. A detailed plan is going to cost you a console. I'm okay. giving you an idea of what you should do. One, you need to prioritize. What kind of man do you want? What, what do those kind of men want from a woman? And are you willing to do what you need to do to get it? But not right now, you are geographically undesirable to all to the kind of men you say you want. So it doesn't matter. If you're not prepared to put yourself in the proximity game, what's the point? So let me get this right. Even if I dropped Boaz in front of you, uh, you're in Connecticut. He's in Jersey. That's a long distance relationship, no matter how you slice it. Who's moving to who? I'm willing to move for love, but it does seem. I don't care of- about a seat. No. Take love out of your vocabulary. Okay. Or keep it there. Okay. And die alone. I'm dead ass serious. Why do we feel like we get love? Why is that so important? Love. Isn't that what this is all for? No. What is it for? 
isn't dying not dying alone is so that you have someone who loves you when you love are dying? Com- no, love comes after. Do you think people loved each other back in the, when they married, <laughs> when they're arranged marriages? You learn to love somebody. And I'm, I'm, I'm extending this because I need people to understand how deep this goes. Talking to a college-educated woman with a PhD and all this other stuff, and you're still talking this Harlan Quinn romance, Disney stuff that does not work in your own life. And you are refusing to get rid of it. But I've had love, Kevin. Okay, well... But I hear you. No, you it's not don't. The first time I've heard that. I mean, no, you don't. You, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, this is why I get real practical. You want love? <laughs> oh well, you really want to do this? We can do it. Do you really want to do this, or do you just kind of want to do this? Go for it. All right. Um, do you want children? I do. How many? I'll settle for one at this point. <laughs> I'm okay. 40. Right. Um, what percentage of the financial load w- for the family would you like to have to be responsible for? 40%. All right. 40%. Mm-hmm. So when you ha- so do you want a boy or a girl? Boy. You want to, all right. So when little, so when little key light is born, I don't know. So I see this face. So little, when little key is born, and you've been waiting for him for forty years, and you have ba- you get have birth pregnant, you give birth. Twelve weeks after you give birth, you're gonna turn him over to a nanny and go back to work, and let somebody else and pay somebody else thousands of dollars to raise. Little key. I believe it can be done. Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. I'm saying that's what <laughs> that's what we're doing. I mean, because that's how I was raised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh let's not go there. Um <laughs> I'm asking, that's what we're doing. How much new how much is new child care? I don't even know. Five hundred bucks on the on the low end a week. Two grand a month. So you turn them over to Becca or even Keisha. I'm and you're just gonna, trying to and you're lower my go... standards, Kevin. Uh-huh. Of course, I'd be I would love to have a wealthy man, of course, where I didn't have to work. But, but not, I understand but I, I'm 40. Just, I'm, I'm not but, in my but, best shape. You know, exactly. I've got exactly so got you're talking a, about a so little you're talking about, about so you don't get to talk about love when you got all those things going on. Too many struggles. Too many. Because you're still wanting to date like a 20-year-old at 40 with all those struggles. But I'd be okay with like a man making like 80K. I think I make enough to you know, cover the difference for one child. Lord have mercy. That, that's what I was thinking, you know, after listening to all of your um, shows. What, like, percent, what percentage of black men, what percentage of black men earn more than $75,000, $80,000 in this country? What percentage? Mm. Come on, PhD. What percentage? Hmm. I'm a PhD. 15. 15. One five. Well, one five or one three. 13 or 15%. And you're in Connecticut. You still want a man in the top 13 to 15% of all men at 40 years old with all the things you said. And that you'd be happy with it. Ma'am, you'd be blessed. That's winning the lotto, the Powerball. This is why I asked, is a B enough? Ma'am, you should be happy if you get a man. Who, no, you you lucky if you get a man making. Mm, you'd be fortunate to find a man who's making median income. 
Okay. Or. Because the kind of man you're saying, ma'am, does exist. I'm not saying he doesn't exist. But does he want a 40-year-old woman who's everything that you just said? But I'm feminine. He... And I'm. Yeah. Okay. How tall are you? I've got some things going for me. How tall me. are you? Five, eight. How tall are you? Five, five eight. eight. Dress size. Twelve. Don't do it, Kevin. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm just being honest. At five, eight, you're feminine. But no, you're a brat. You're soft-spoken, but you're a brat. That comes across as feminine, but it's kind of passive-aggressive. Hmm. I can accept that. <laughs> so, at 5'8", 40 years old, yes, men who are earning that kind of money. But when he's looking across the spans and he's making, a black man making 80000 is making twice what the average black man makes. He's got options. And the real hard question comes down to He's got options among black women and all women because he's more economically attractive. Why does he want a 40 year old woman, period? Especially if he wants more than one child, you can't do that. One is at best. So yes, you ladies need to really substantially lower your expectations to reality to meet your to meet your reality. That's what I I thought I was doing. No. You're, You're saying expect- not 80, 50. Ma'am, a man marrying a man marrying you, right? Can get one child at best. That is just a step above the woman who was on before you, the woman in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, listen, and that woman was 36 years old, five foot four, 130 some odd pounds. You saw the pictures and I'm saying she, and I said the same thing to her. A man is going to want for the risk that comes along with marriage in the West to get at least his own seed into the next generation. At 40, ma'am, you're five years into geriatric pregnancy. Are you doing, have you done any fertility tests or anything like that? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I'm in really great shape, but my gynecologist doesn't recommend it after 42. Exactly. Said, yes. Exactly. So one child at best. Ma'am, you cannot be playing this money game. Does he have a honestly? I'm not, it's not about the money, Kevin. I, I was think I was hoping you would kind of understand, given um my background. I just don't know how much in common I'll have with a man who was making 50k. I need an intellectual man. I'm raised by professors, you know. I need to be able to have a uh, intellectual. <laughs> oh my god. Man. I mean, I just don't think we'll click otherwise. It's well, not you know, that. Okay. I laugh because I'm trying to be polite. You don't have that kind of leverage to be walking. You are acting walking like you are showing up prize to this man. Because your daddy and your mama are educated and you're Delta and your mama's a Delta. Your father's a Kappa and your brother's a Kappa. He ain't marrying none of that. He's marrying your 40 year old self. This is why I said, you ladies really, really believe you are such, so much, mm -mm. you you overrank and overestimate yourself. And that's why I said this PhD shit goes to y'all's head. I just don't know what kind of stuff I'd have in common with him. In other words, I will be settling for a man at median income. I got news for you. You just insulted over half of the black men in this country. No, I yes, it's not you did, that. ma'am. Listen, that's not what I meant. But that's what you that's did. Not what I meant. But that's what you did. I know it's not what you meant, but that's what you did when you I'm said so I don't know. When you said I, when you listen, let, don't over talk me. When you said that, I was hoping that I would understand 
where you're coming from, looking at your background, I understand that you waited too long to play that card. I don't okay. care what your background is. I care that you're 40 and your your doctor does not recommend you having a child past 42. I care that you live in Connecticut and you're geographically undesirable for many black men. I care that you're five foot eight and a dress size 12. And I care that you want a man making around $80,000. And what is he going to get from you? What are you bringing to the table as far as wife skills? I'm supportive. I'm kind. I can cook. I mean, you got a I, recipe book? A whole recipe book? No, but. Okay. Um, what can you cook? Um, tonight I made this Parmesan encrusted chicken and some spinach and some au gratin potatoes. Okay. What else can you cook? Um, steak. Um, spaghetti. <laughs> I mean, uh, fried chicken, if that's what he wants. I can cook pretty, pretty much anything. What about healthy? I mean, I cook mostly healthy for myself, believe it or not. I understand. But I think... Ma'am, ma'am, what I'm trying to get to understand is what are you bringing to this table as far as domestic skills? Oh, okay. I cook, I clean, I and I'm were great you, with kids. Okay, were you actually raised to be a wife? Be honest. No, but I was raised okay, by okay. a Southern so, belle. So... Did still I need you to stop. I need you to stop. I need you to stop. Okay. I'm doing this is why it doesn't work. You cannot put your what your mama did to get her her husband on the table for your man. It doesn't translate. Your mama mm -hmm. was the Southern Belle. That's why she has a husband. And my dad was still the cook, by the way. I said your mama was a Southern Belle. That's why yeah. she has a mm. see. Generation X women fell into the borrowing from other generations. You borrow the struggle of Rosetta. You borrow the struggles of the slaves, but you don't, but you had none of the characteristics of the previous generations. So when I ask you, what are you bringing? You bring a modern woman with a PhD who wants an intellectual. Fine. You should have married him in your twenties. You don't, you don't men who are that era. How? Okay. $80,000. Let's just take it. $80,000. How old is the oldest man you've ever dated? Age differential between you and him. Oh, you don't want to know. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I dated a 60 year old. This last guy I dated. Mm, yeah, but that was. Okay. Yeah. How old, what's the oldest man you would marry? Um, probably 58. 58. What is the average lifespan of a black man in this country? <laughs> um, what, I don't know, what is it, 69, 70? Some some stats say 68, some say 72. Okay. So 58. So if let's just take 72. That means if he lived to 72 and you had a child, if you got pregnant on your wedding night, you, your husband be dead when the child's 14. I did think about that. I'm saying yeah. that's the oldest. But I, I, I think older, younger. My, my point is, ma'am, you are coming at this as if you have leverage. You're coming at this as though you have time that you don't have, sexual market value leverage that you don't have, ge geographical proximity to these kind of men that you don't have, and time that you don't have. To where you actually can inject it into a conversation with a straight face that, hey, I don't know what I would have in common with a man who's earning the median income as implication. These men cannot be, uh, learn it on their own. 
Just because you go to college doesn't Kevin, mean- Kevin, that's not true. Please, that's not what I meant. I really no. want to retract that. That's not what I meant, Kevin. I, my ex-fiance is a blue collar worker and was brilliant. He's a, but he had a lot of side hustles too. And so, yeah, like he was- Then why do you say it? Be, I said it because you asked me what I would want. Like in a perfect world, yes. But what I would settle for, or oh, let me not use settle, but what I, you know, that doesn't really matter as long as he can have an intellectual conversation. We can enjoy similar things. We can talk about politics and, you know. I got, I got yeah. other news for you, ma'am. Why do you, uh, I want a partner. You're not, oh, Jesus, H fucking Christ. You're not a partner, you're a help me. And that's exactly what I was going to say. You ladies have fallen into this partnership feminist stuff. Men don't want to sit around and talk politics with you. They want you to go in and, and anyway. This is why this whole die alone thing is so sad because so many of our women bought wholly into the notion of modern woman and feminism. And you really want a partner and your mother was a Southern belle. You didn't learn. You didn't learn. You but look, she works. I don't care. And you're about to be, and this is what I mean. Here comes a brat in her. Notice every time I say something she doesn't like, she starts whining. <laughs> you're a brat. <laughs> and no one, in order to be a brat, you got to be fucking hot. I'm just being straight up. You got to be hot to be a brat. No one wants a 40 year old brat. I'm going to be honest, ma'am. That's sobering. You're hanging around with a bunch of women who've given up. Right. And I don't want to, I don't, I recognize I don't want to do that. I recognize that. Well, then years you need ago. a reality check, ma'am. Because. Maybe you've overestimated your value judging by your company, but you need to move to a city where you actually understand what it means to compete for a man. And you don't have a lot of time. What month of your, was your birthday? August. So you just turned 40. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, February. Nine months, you got 21 months before you're out of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. 21 oh, so yeah. even if it takes six months even if it takes six months that means you got 15 months mm -hmm. i'm on the dating apps kevin i'm trying all righty then the, the wine is not gonna work with me i don't care about the dating apps i'm just told you what it is ma'am. i'm giving you the best i can but the the world does not owe you understanding and once the dating apps and all this other stuff doesn't work and you sitting in Connecticut looking for, waiting for love, when, uh, when you turn 42, there are no excuses. That's why I said dying alone, one in three, one in four women will marry, three or four will die alone. It's a choice. And now you guys are seeing what I mean. These choices are micro choices all along the way to live in delusion, to live in fantasy, to live in numerate, to live, I don't care, to live, well, I can find it, I can have it all. It's not as though it's not tragic, it's chosen. Before 1965, black folks were married at an 80% rate. Women, black women are choosing not to marry. This is a perfect call of the illustration of that. PhD and all. So watching all the videos and everything else, ma'am, you're going to have to start moving with a sense of urgency and a sense of intention if you hope to have a different outcome. And if not, well, what I'm going to say is if and when, let's say this doesn't work out, don't be bitter at men. Don't be angry at men. Oh, you, I won't. You've had, I, I you've had more it. opportunities. You've had a lifetime of opportunities with men. Mm -hmm. That's more than that's more than some folks get. So, all right, I'm going to get on to the next call. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you so much. I mean, I get it. I get it. And I get how intoxicating it can be too because um, when you've been told your entire life that you can have it all and it can work out. Boop, 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 boom. Mm -mm. All right, let's move on to the next call. Uh, if your audio is not connected, you go away. Michelle, go ahead. Hello? Yes. You have to turn off YouTube in the background. I'm sorry? You have to turn off YouTube in the background. I hear myself talking. Turn off the TV and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that better? Yeah, why are you so angry? Hold on one second. Okie dokie. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Why are you so angry? I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I can't. Why? Okay. Okay. You there, got YouTube okay now plans. I can hear you, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I Zoom YouTube, every but... single day and I couldn't get this to work. Well, but... Why am I angry? Yes. Okay, I can't say that I'm angry, but it is annoying when I meet men and they're just all in in the very beginning. They're saying everything that they want, and then all of a sudden they ghost. How old they are you? ghost, and they're How still out there just playing. How old are you? I'm 42. They're all in in the beginning, and they say everything in the they... very beginning. Okay. Yes, they're they're all in. They're saying, "Oh, I want this, I want that." And then after a month or two, you can just tell that they're still out there just playing around. Um okay. Um well All men are like that? I mean, that's what I'm trying to understand. I mean, uh, yes, it seems like it's getting like that. Yes. Really? Maybe it's where I'm located. Well, where where yeah. do you live? Dallas. No, no, I spent 11 years in Dallas and Dallas has some of the most, it, anyway, 42, married. huh? No, no, They're Dallas, married. no, Dallas has some, I'll be in Dallas either this week or next week. I'm coming to Texas cause we got a problem and I live most of my adult <laughs> life in, in Dallas. What do you go to church? What's happening here in Dallas? What, what do you go to church? Me and my girlfriend. What do you go to, uh, don't know, what do you go to church? Concord. Uh-huh. When's your last relationship? My last relationship was about two years ago. Two years ago. And who ended that? I did. Why? <laughs> because he ended up being married. What do you mean he ended up being married? He was married when you met him. He was married when I met him. Oh, and right. I had no idea that he so was how old are you? married. You're 42? 42. Mm -hmm. You can't run a background check on a dude? Hmm. <laughs> Well, that's that's how I ended up. Uh, no, I usually don't do stuff like that. But that's how I ended up knowing that he was married. So basically what you're trying to get me to accept is all the men in Dallas are fuck boys and losers. And you and you, and I'm just going to say no man relationships are reflective because I know plenty of men in Dallas that don't fall into that category. Um, oh, well, I haven't met them. Well, um, well, let's let's dig into that a little bit deeper. Do you want to be married? I do. You have any I children? Do. I don't. You want children? I do. I go back and forth. The older I get, At I have 42? to say that. I'm sorry. At 42? At 42, do I want children? Yeah. I mean, biological children at 42? Yes. Mm -hmm. How's that going to happen? <clears throat> well. Have you talked to your OBGYN? Well, I have a, a situation. I would actually have to have a surrogate. Okay. Um, I, I froze my egg, so okay. I'm a, a cancer survivor. So, so am I. Right on. So it, it, the problem is men, not not the women, not you. 
What are you looking for in a man? What are you, look, what are you looking? What are you looking for in a man? Honesty. Um, I mean, we're aren't we all looking for the same thing? No nope. women. Nope. No. I want someone who's in the church. You know, I want someone really? who has a great job. Why do you I want, want someone to be in the who's church? easy on the Why eyes. do you want them to be in the church? Uh, I mean, they don't have to be necessarily like active in the church, and but I would like for them to be a Christian. I should say. Why? I would like for them to have the same faith that that I do. I think. Okay, it, so it, how's the so you go to Concord? Is the pastor helping you find the man? He is not, and I actually know my pastor really well. I've never talked to my pastor about this. Really? How long you been in Concord? I I, I mentor his daughter. <laughs> oh, but I, I know. I ask you, how long you been in Concord? I've been at Concord for ten years now. Right. And Eleven you, years. Right. Concord, Concord in Dallas, and you're not working with the pastor to help you find a husband. I am not. Hmm. Does that make sense? Why? I'm sorry. You said why not? That makes sense. Why? You know, I just, it just never crossed yeah, my mind. Brian yet. Carter. That's what I thought. Brian mm -hmm. Carter. Uh-huh. Pastor it Carter. never crossed your mind. You've been there 10 years and you want your man to be in the church or from the church, but you're not working with the pastor of the church or men in the church. Are you in the singles ministry? You know, I was a are part of the sing singles group. Okay. Are you, you're a part I of I was in the singles group for about six months, but um, everyone was just younger than me. And so, and I was about, I was 37 at the time and everyone was late twenties to early thirties. Did you go to college? Yes, I did. Uh, what's the highest level of achievement? What's the highest degree level? I have a BFA. Okay. So, um, all seriousness, all, all joking aside, you want a man who's in church, but you're not working with the church to help you find a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Is it that you want a man in church or you just want somebody to who is a Christian? Yep. A man who is a Christian. But why? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last thing you said. I said, but why? Why do I want someone who's a Christian? Yes. Why do you? Want because I want someone who has the same faith as me, who has the same beliefs as I do. I don't. But I don't buy that, man. Because if you did, you'd be working with the church to help you find a man, and that's the first thing you'd be looking for is a Christian man. Because uh, was your last boyfriend a Christian? He was. Mm-hmm. Mm, but he was married. <laughs> <laughs> so you were committed. So what were you doing in that situation with that married man, Christian woman? Well, I did. <laughs> Actually, I oh, I'm I sorry. Did that, that, did that cut a little too deep? No, no, it didn't cut deep. deep I mean, because seriously, you man, just extremely I mean, deceptive. Christ he was really Christianity. Deceptive. Christianity becomes a lot with modern Christian feminist women. Just becomes a way for you to disqualify men. It's not the way that you really qualify men, as I've shown. Mm -hmm. By your own life. It's a way you've disqualified men, but it's damn sure not a qualification. Right. Yes. So you were with a man for a year and a half. No, it's been a year and a half. So you, were with, you were, how long? How long were you guys together? It was um, about seven months. Seven months. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> seven months. Mm -hmm. uh, how many times did you take him? To I church? had known him for a while, though. I had known him. Oh, for... Brandon, not well enough. How many times take him to church? I'm sorry. How many times did you take him to church? I didn't. Huh? I did not take him to church. But you want a man that can share for your faith. Mm-hmm. Yes. But you didn't take him to church? I didn't. I didn't, because I'm I'm just kind of private with my life. For a while. Remember the first, go back last year, guys, when I did, when, when I first talked to Tiffany Chanel in Houston, and then I talked to that one sister who went to PV, and she was in her late 30s or 40s, I pull up the interview. Remember when I told her I knew her pastor, Tony Evans? Mm -hmm. I told you guys I know the Dallas scene very well. This is a mirror of that same call. Different woman, same scenario, similar scenarios. Very similar scenarios. Dallas is littered with this. Ma'am, 
If you want a man who's really a Christian, why aren't you going to church with that man? Why isn't that man going to church with you? Why isn't your pastor helping you find them? Why aren't you in a church that facilitates Christian relationships? You know, I just never thought about reaching out to my pastor about finding somebody. You know, I was a part of the small groups and that was about it. And, you know, they were, everyone was younger than me. And so, I don't know, I just kind of like left it at that. Mm -hmm. um, I've never really met anyone at the church outside of the the small groups that I was a part of. And I've just never, <laughs> I mean, I talk to my pastor all the time. That's not usually, I'm just never talking to him about relationships. So I submit that you're really not trying to find a Christian man. No, I am. It's just that. No, you're, no, you're not. No, you're not. Absolutely, you are not. I've just, I've just laid it out. You didn't even go to church with the man you went to see the, la the last time. Mm -hmm. So how can you care about? So where did Christianity come up in that? Well, we just—I mean, we prayed together. We just didn't go to church. Right, you together. also had sex together too. Premarital sex, fornication. I won't deny that, but well, exactly with a married man, ma'am. I'm saying I had no idea. I'm saying, I, like, but you I, said you knew him before. Okay, you said you knew. I him did before. know. See what, what would happen? Let me, hold on, let me hold on, hold on, hold on. See what would have happened if you'd have actually picked the man from the church? You would have known one thing: he wasn't married. He actually went to Tony Evans's church. He's a I member said, of that if you, church. If you'd have you picked a man from your church, you'd have known he wasn't married. I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you took him to Concord, even though he went to uh, Tony Evans Church, just slip, oh, damn it. Oh, Faith. Um, oh. Uh, world, not World Harvest. I'm going to another. I can't think of the name of it. But yeah, Tony Evans' church. Shout out to Pastor Haynes. Appreciate it with. Um, That's a... Uh, Freddie Haynes. Freddie Haynes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. T.D. Jakes and I over at the Potter's house. Uh, but the bottom, if you took him to your church, Concord is such a lot. If you took him to your church, somebody would be like, uh, that man married. You're right. I know. See, Christianity is supposed to shield you from all this, not open you up to all this madness for you to come and tell me that the problem is the men in Dallas. I will not let you visit that bullshit on them. When it shows in your life that the men that you picked aren't even lining up with what you say is important. And in practice, you're not doing these things. So Christianity cannot save you. You're just using it to filter out men that you don't find desirable. And this mm -hmm. happens too often down there. We get, no, I'm going to move you to the side because I don't know you enough to say this about you. So I'm going to move you to the side. There's so many women down in Dallas who are pseudo Christians, Christian feminists. It is just rampant with them. Dallas stinks with these women. They come in with their Bibles talking good, that good, 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 and they running through the Dallas like Jezebels. And then wanting men to be saved. All right, back over to you. At 42 years old, ma'am, if you want a man who's a Christian, uh, and it's an important part, uh, yeah, you need to really start working with your pastor or somebody in a church that has a thriving singles ministry where you may have a better selection of men. You may even have to switch church homes. If that's, okay. really, if that's really a, a determination, but at 42 years old, wanting children and all that other kind of stuff, ma'am, it, it's going to... Uh, I go back and forth with the with the, the children thing. Okay. I'm like, I enjoy my freedom, but... The, right, you know, ma'am. I mean, I'll be honest, ma'am. Are you really cut out to be somebody's wife? Why would you say that? Do you enjoy Why wouldn't freedom? I be? You enjoy your own. Enjoy don't, my freedom. Oh, 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 don't check that. Whoa, whoa. 
Don't don't do that. Don't do what? Why wouldn't you be based upon what you said? You enjoy your freedom. You go back. Enjoy and forth. my freedom being able to just come uh, and go. Still. Enjoying your freedom. Not necessarily wanting to have a kid. Uh, you become somebody's wife. Having a kid and hold on, ma'am. Totally as a different. wife, what is your what is your job as a wife? Your number one job as a wife is being what, especially as a Christian. What is a woman's role on this planet? To cater to the man. Nope. To and take a, care of his needs. Nope. To be a helpmeet. Not to come and go as you wish. Not to have freedom. I'm not saying freedom and come in that come in, come as I, I want with a husband. I'm saying more so like if I'm in a relationship with if I have a husband and we don't have children, we can go freely. I get it. We can travel easily without children. But if we have children, travel. then we have to travel. like what are you talking about? Babysitter traveling. and all. You talking about traveling nationally? You talk, talking about traveling internationally and nationally, uh, domestically? Both. What do you do for a living? I'm an educator. Uh, you're a teacher. Yes. What are you in pre? What are you in uh, grade school, college? High school. You, high school. Um. All right. Now I I do know Texas make teachers make pretty good money, but they're not rich. I do a lot of things on the side. I do private lessons, and mm -hmm. I teach group fitness. I so I asked you the ultimate question, ma'am, and it wasn't to insult you, but are you really cut out to be a, uh, would you, um, in your marriage vow, would you say love, honor, and obey? Absolutely. Uh, would you be submissive to your husband? Absolutely. Okay. So at 42, there are all kinds of situations you can work out. But the thing is, ma'am, it comes out ultimately down to the same thing with every relationship. What kind of man do you want? What kind of uh, what kind of man do you want? And then that the, what kind of woman do the men that you want want? And what are you willing to do to get them? I don't doubt that you know what you want, but do, but do you know what the kind of men you want want from a woman? Yes, I I mean I feel like it's a it's a partnership in what I give is what I expect to get back. A partnership? Why, yeah. don't I know, why do Christian women keep talking about partnerships? Where's partnership in the Bible? I don't understand this Christian feminism stuff. Where's partnership in Bible? It's not a partnership. He has headship well, over you. Okay. I mean, I don't really think of it in that way. I think of any working relationship is give and take. I think of it as a partnership. That's what I'm searching for. I'm I'm searching for a best friend, a partner. Okay. Well, many Christian Not feminists. So. Many Christian feminists are. Many Christian women are feminists. Feminist. Most Christian feminists don't. They believe in they believe in equality and partnership. And they talk and move in lots of similar ways. And in my in my channel, if you've been around, how long you watch my content? Actually, this is my first time. Well, ma'am, I have talked to different varying versions of Christian feminists, like at least once every couple of weeks. So anybody who's watched my channel, they're probably having a good old time in the comment section. Like, yep, we know what this is because this is rampant in the black community. Black women want Christian men, but you don't want to live like in the order, the divinity in which God aligned us. You want partnerships. You want this different arrangement. Doesn't really work. This is why men in general, this is why many, most men have left, many black men have left the church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So... All right, but I'm uh, I got to get on to the next person. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Have a good day, though. You too. Right. You know, guys. It, I mean, I don't. I, I mean, here's the thing. I don't fault women for this stuff has been taught, and when you're in church, 
especially when they start preaching their prosperity gospel and women have been told they can have it all. You can have it all. God wants you to have this. And he wants you to have that in your best life and this and that. You got to understand that many women have heard this stuff. So I can't be mad at women who believe this stuff. But when I see the disconnects in Christianity and so many women claim to be practicing Christians and want Christian men and they're living life worldly. I'm like, Christian feminism is a real thing. All right, so I got a little bit left. Um, somebody has their hand up. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what, we have, what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do because we're running out of time here. I'm going to do this. If you have a disagreement, if you have a disagreement, if you have a disagreement, raise your hand because uh, it's fair to say that like 18 people in here, I'm not going to be able to get into everybody. If you have a disagreement or you think I'm off base on something that, you know, women are angry and they should be angry. Um, let's take it that way because yeah, let's handle that one. Um, what is going on here? The battery seems to be running low here. Uh, what is going on? My battery should not be running low when it's on the adapter, man. That's crazy. The battery should not be running low on the adapter. Uh, all right, now, if I come to you and you have a disagreement, I need you to have an actual disagreement. Unmute yourself, Candace. Good evening. Well, good morning. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. I am doing well. I'm that. doing well. What's your disagreement? Um, the disagreement. Why are Why are we angry? That's the question. This is my first time on your show, and I I took out my journal. I've been taking notes. Um. My, it, I don't know if it's necessarily a disagreement, but this, the, I keep you hearing, hearing you we say generation, to, we got, we got to get generation to X, uh -huh. like, why isn't it taught? You know, uh, you, you hit it on the nail about this uh, prosperity movement. Like, man, what, what has what been a the, detriment? Li, 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 okay, listen, okay. I need you to make it simple. To make, make it, it plain. simple. Okay. What's the disagreement? Go to the next person. All right. Okie dokie. Um, unmute yourself. Crystal, unmute yourself. All right, what's your disagreement? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You disagree about the Jezebel thing? Yeah. If I'm, what is if a I'm Jezebel? Not, I'm thinking more of a whore, someone who's a little promiscuous. That's not all what it does. When a woman says she wants a Christian man and she wants a Christian marriage, that starts with in the church. Are you a Christian? Um, I would like to say I'm pretty spiritual. Okay. I don't really like okay. to pay. Well, due respect, ma'am. I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm a Christian. She's a Christian. I just We understand what we're talking about. Being spiritual has nothing to do with being Christian. There are rules. There are ways of thinking that don't map over the spiritual. And your question kind of exemplifies the fact that you don't understand 
what I was talking about because she didn't disagree with it. Well, this is just personally. Okay. okay. Well, you're not a Christian. She is. So that's a But I do have a question for you as well. Okay. Uh, hold on. What is the question? Oh. Oh my gosh. All right. We'll get on with that. I'm trying to play with folks. So here we go. I got to do better than that. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, somebody used her name. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have to get on camera if you want to talk to me. So, like it or not, folks, many women are saying they were upset because they were taught something. Look, Generation X learned something different. What is, does it matter? What do you want? What are you willing to do to get it? Really a simple calculus in life. And for so long, the modern dating calculus has said that the problems are on the men's side and the problems are on both sides. But here's the unfortunate reality, ladies. Men worldwide control access to relationships. Women worldwide control access to reproduction, well, sex, and decide who gets born in this country. Let's say it that way. Ladies control access to sex and if a woman does not want to have a child, she can decide whether it lives or dies as it stands today. Men control access to relationships. And I think so many women are, have not have been divorced from that. In order to get the kind of man you want, you're going to have to give him what he wants to buy. You're going to have to give him what he wants to buy. When it comes right down to it, that's what it is. What do you want to do? And when I say this, for so many women, these concepts are, are proven to be troubling, difficult to wrap their mind around. And the fact is, and what that shows me is, shows me that you ladies have bought into the propaganda that men are down here and you're up here. That is a change for people who want equality and equality of opportunity. You darn sure don't want equality in how you look. It is rare that I hear a woman speak of men in a positive light. E equal, e even equal, much less positive. Most of the times women speak of men and it's in a but that's what you hear. Men ain't shit. Men ain't this. Men are trash. Men are this. Men are that. Okay. Well, unless you plan on uh, getting with getting with the uh, same sex, what you gonna do? And as this show has proven, week day in and day out, week in and week out, uh, the modern problem in relationships doesn't seem to really be falling in the men's place. Women don't seem to know what they, women don't seem to have, don't know what they bring to the table. Don't seem to be able to quantify what they bring to the table, but no darn sure what they want to extract from the table. The inability to choose and the inability to stay and make a relationship work. What was the statistic? Um, we're going to go over this. We're going to talk about this this week. Uh, in Valentine's week, in Valentine's week, black women are the only group that have a higher divorce rate than a marriage rate. With nearly 31 divorces per thousand marriage, with nearly 31 divorces per thousand married women, age 15 and older 
with 17.3 marriages per thousand unmarried women. In short, That's darn near double. The divorce rate is twice as high as the marriage rate. Now, there are a lot of factors that could go into it, but the fact is it needs to be addressed. And we're going to have to get to this too. One, why are you so scared to be a, a mother, but you're not scared to be a baby mama? It's easier to be a baby mama than a wife. I'll have your baby, but hold on. I can't be your wife. We're going to get into that too. It's easy to be a baby mama. Much easier to be a baby mama. I I'll, I'll had a baby, but his wife, oh, that's, that's too major. Let me think about it. And then you got a marital rate and you got a divorce and you divorce twice as much as you marry. Those are going in the wrong direction. If we're going in the direction of where it's easier to have a baby before you get a husband, to now it's okay and now it's even cool to where you're more afraid to be a wife than a baby mama. Think about how often you say, oh, you're too young to be married. You're too young to be married. You're too young to be married. 24, that's too young. But you don't tell her she's too young to have a baby. And then the only group that have a higher divorce rate, higher than the marriage rate, 31 per thousand, Versus 17.3 thousand. I mean, 31. Yeah, if you divide that, mm, let's do let's do some quick math. 31. 31 divided by 17. Wow. Almost two to one. 1.82. For every one marriage, you got 1.82 divorces. So it's almost one, or it's almost two to one. Where do we go with that? Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at men who talk about this stuff. Don't get mad about men who bring these things up. Don't say you're bashing women or it's toxic or this or that. Ladies, what are we going to do about this stuff? If you want different outcomes, I'm afraid to get married because marriage is in a divorce. That's what somebody said the other day. Uh huh. But who's filing for? But divorce rates are so high. Yeah. But who's filing for the divorces? It's not men. So if women are filing for divorce, seventy to eighty percent of the time, and then unmarried women are seeing this divorce rate. Ladies, who are you blaming? You can't get mad at the men. The men aren't walking. That's not the popular narrative. The popular narrative is the guys ain't crap. They're leaving behind all these women with all these kids and all these problems. But I'm sorry. That's just not the truth. That's just not what plays out. So we're going to have to get to it. This has been a dope show. Valentine, Valentine's weekend. Valentine's week. It is going to be something else. But don't get mad at. Um, don't get mad at people like myself. Don't get mad at the men, ladies. And don't be mad at your mother. Your mother didn't know any better. Your mother was doing the best she could. Don't, but I also say don't be mad at your father because he wasn't there because he was doing the best he could too. My position is you got to learn how to forgive your father and judge your mother and then forgive them both and then forgive yourself and keep it moving. People are not perfect. You got to judge your mother harshly, give your father some grace, forgive them both, and forgive yourself for being the culmination of all this. Work on your issues, do the work, and then go best, go forward and make the best situation you can. That's what I think. But until then, you know, we shall see. Dope show, dope show, good stuff. Wait till I get down in Houston. Dallas and Houston, maybe I'll come down this week. If not this week, it'll be next week because Houston, we have a problem. Apparently, Dallas, we got a problem too. Huh. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. Till the next time. Peace. We are gone.
I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. So tell you.